This tutorial picks up where we left off last time, and I'll show you how to integrate Excel into your Grasshopper workflow using Bumblebee, a plugin by David Manns, to read and write from Excel documents. So, what we're going to do is first figure out how to read in data from an existing Excel file. So, if we go to the uh, file folder with all of our data sets, there's a file called subwayentrances.xls, and we can go ahead and open this file. Most uh, Grasshopper to Excel connections require there to be a running instance of Excel, so that's something to keep in mind. And you'll see that this file has a bunch of names of subway entrances, what lines they're served by, and their latitude and longitude. So what we want to do is plot all of these on our map. So what we're going to do is go to the Bumblebee tab and go to data and choose data in, which will allow us to grab data from Excel. Now, this has a lot of different options, um, but in general, uh, we don't need to set most of this. Uh, we should be able to just create a Boolean toggle. So under params input Boolean toggle, set this value to true and plug it in. And as long as it can talk to that running instance of Excel, then you should see that the data comes in um, organized by row, essentially, where each row is a branch. So in this case, we can kind of ignore that first, uh, first branch, which just is the names of the columns. Um, but we want to grab the latitude and longitude and the name for each one of these uh, locations. So we're going to use the list item component under list, list item, and we're going to plug in all this data. And I don't think I've shown this yet. If you zoom in to a list item component, you'll see that it adds these little pluses. So rather than making a bunch of different copies with different index values, you can actually just hit the plus a few times. And this is a great way of splitting out the items in a list if it's not too long a list. So this is going to be all of the items at index 0, at index 1, at index 2, at index 3, and so on. So 2 and 3 are going to correspond to the latitude and longitude of all of our points. We're going to return to Heron and use a Herman component called latlon to xy. And we're going to feed in the latitude and longitude. And it will turn red because not all of those numbers are valid, um, but that's okay. It actually does successfully plot points in our coordinate system um, that represent each one of those uh, subway entrances. So if we wanted, we could put a text tag or parse out which lines are which and color code them, but I'll leave that as an exercise to you. Um, but what we get is a nice list of points um, that maybe we can do further analysis on, like figuring out how far each parcel is from uh, the nearest subway entrance. That's something we'll do a little bit later. Now, we can also send data to Excel. Um, and for that, we're going to create a fresh new Excel document. This is typically how this works. We're going to create a blank workbook. And we're going to close out of subway entrances, uh, just to be safe. And what we want to do is take all of the data from our SHP file and put it into an Excel document so we could do other kinds of processing on it. So for this, we need to do a little bit of a list manipulation because we want to make sure that these fields come in as the column headers for this Excel document. So return to the Bumblebee tab, choose Data Out, and in the same way that, it, that the data in brings in data in branches, data out bring, uh, sends out data organized in branches. So we need to reorder our data uh, so that we put these fields at the beginning as a new branch. So we're going to use a list component called entwine from the sets tab under tree. And we're going to right-click it and choose flatten inputs. We're going to uncheck this option so that it says graft. And what that means is that essentially this is going to put all of the data into new branches, um, but a prepend an index of 0 or 1. Um, and this may seem a little bit confusing. Don't worry about it too much. Essentially, we're just trying to put these branches together in order. 
and you'll see that the result is we have one branch which is 0, 0, 0, which is our headings, and then everything else is 1, 0, whatever uh, that follows. Um, however, for this to work properly with our Excel component, we also need to get rid of that distinction. We just we want this order, but we want the branches to just be renumbered in a simple way. So we're going to use a component from TreeSloth, and please make sure that you had TreeSloth installed. I think I uh, it should be in your plugins folder, so if you just dragged all of those in, uh, you should be good. Um, but I know at the beginning of the tutorial, I didn't necessarily show that. But if you double-click and type renumber paths, that component will take this data structure and renumber it simply so that it just counts from 0 to 9499. We're going to plug that in as the data to write out to Excel, and we're going to create another Boolean toggle and set it to true, and plug that into stream. And now that empty Excel file that we had set up is now populated with all of the data that we extracted from our SHP file. So this is really useful if we want to do additional processing or maybe filter out things or do calculations on things. I mean, a lot of that we can do in Grasshopper as well, but uh, this is often a useful mechanism. So one example of this, if you highlight your first row and go to the Data tab and click Filter, then this is a really useful way for quickly parsing out data information. Um, what we can do is start to filter this. So we can say, all right, only show me buildings that were constructed in 2014. So I can uncheck select all and then check 2014. And let's add a few more years here. Let's just do that. And this will now limit our data set to just those buildings that were created between those years. So this filter option, and you can start to combine filters, and you can sort your data with filters. It's a really quick way to manipulate stuff in Excel that you know might take a few more steps to do in Grasshopper Live. So that's a really nice way to grab data and send it to Excel. Um, if um, for the next uh, tutorial, we're going to look at maybe visualizing the data in a grasshopper context.